okay. So, I'm sure that walking through your life, you guys have all seen a, a butterfly fly by your path. But how much do you really know about this butterfly? Where has it been? Where is it going? Is it the same one that you saw yesterday? And could it be the same one that you're going to see next week? Today, I'm going to share some things that I learned about the monarch butterfly while I was researching for this speech. I'm going to start off with a generic um, overview of its life cycle, and then I'm going to get into some more specifics later. All right, so starting off with just the life cycle of a monarch butterfly, it starts off as an egg attached to the underside of a milkweed leaf. And after four days, it hatches into a caterpillar that you might see crawling around. So this caterpillar basically just eats for like nine to 14 days, like the, the book Hungry Caterpillar, just eats and eats and eats. And it actually molts its skin five times in that like two week period. And then after that, once it's like super full and it's molted its fifth time, it forms a chrysalis again on the leaf of a tree or a nearby bush. And in there, it stays for eight to 15 days before emerging as the butterflies that you see flying around. Now the butterflies, they live usually for two to five weeks, but if they're born in the northern regions of the United States during the late summer to early fall, they can't survive the winters, so they actually go on a, a journey that's up to 3,000 miles down to Southern California and Mexico. So in Mexico and Southern California, these butterflies spend the winter hanging from the oya melt trees, and they look a little bit, oh shoot, they look a little bit like these, just hanging there. Now, in the picture <coughs> right here, it might look like leaves that are like autumn colors, but those are actually butterflies. So, going back to this picture right here, this is, you can see the migration coming from the eastern United States and the western United States and northern, and they all go down to Mexico from the months of October through March. So this migration is very important because it provides a lot of information for scientists who have lots of questions about these butterflies. First of all, um, Patrick Guerra, Robert Greger, and Skin Rebbit, um, in, their, in their study published on June 24, 2014, had realized that butterflies, in order to migrate down to the towards the equator actually have a magnetic sensor in their head that helps them follow along with a solar sensor so that they know where to travel. Because these butterflies that are coming down from the north have actually never been on this migration before and they won't do it again. So every time that they migrate down, that's a new generation of butterflies that have never done it before. So because it, uh, they travel such a far way, if these butterflies are infected by parasites, most of them cannot survive the journey, and it actually helps the population become more healthy. Because if they die off on the way down, then the ones that are ready to reproduce once the winter is over, they're, they're healthy and they pass on better genes to their offspring. And this was found in a study published on November 25th by Sonia Altizer. So, along with the weak butterflies dying off on their migration, Scientists have also discovered that if that the male butterflies can pass on like antibodies that protect against um, parasites to the offspring. So this all sounds pretty well, and the butterfly population should be pretty healthy. But their numbers in North America are actually dwindling, so scientists have questions about that too. So what I found out from a study by Tyler Flackhart in June. 25th of 2014, that the um, areas up here by Illinois, Nebraska, and Kansas, it's known as the Corn Belt in California because they grow corn. And because of that, there's also a large population of butterflies when they're migrating or moving back up to the northern areas after spending the winter in Mexico. And these areas are actually being like repurposed, and the food that the caterpillars would be eating is not growing there anymore. So that has a large impact on the butterfly population that would be traveling back down, and that is what they found. So in conclusion, I hope that you guys learned a little bit about the butterfly as much as I did, and yeah.